Hey, Sonic Grover here. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another Logic Pro demo where we will be talking about five snags in Logic Pro that can really hurt your workflow. But before we get into that, I would like to talk to you today about my sponsor of this video, DistroKid. DistroKid is a service that I just started using. I am very excited about using DistroKid for my personal musical endeavors. So if you would, let's take a moment and talk about DistroKid and then we'll get back to the five snags in Logic Pro. If you're an independent artist who believes in producing music prolifically, you know that obscurity is a big problem. So why not sign up for an account on DistroKid and get your music heard everywhere? DistroKid is a top tier music distribution platform that sends your music out to all the major streaming services like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, and all the rest. There are two good reasons for signing up. The first reason is DistroKid is ridiculously affordable. For just $19.99 a year, you can upload an unlimited amount of music. The second reason is DistroKid does not take in a commission from any sales you earn on these services. You get 100% of your earnings after taxes and or processing fees. So start today by clicking on the link in the description below to get 7% off your first annual subscription. Thanks for listening and keep producing the music you love. So let's talk about the five snags in Logic Pro that can really hurt your workflow. The first being the playhead. And this is the white cursor looking thing running down the middle of my project. Now with the playhead, you can navigate pretty fluidly, you know, go from the start of the project to the end of the project or section. You can also go from bar to bar using the comma and period keys. And what's nice also is you can zoom in on an area. So here I have this on bar 17. And so I want to zoom in closer and closer on bar 17. But if I do that, you'll notice I'm nowhere near bar 17 inside my visual space, I'm actually over on bar one. So the way to go about that, really two ways to go about that is first, this track, these four regions need to be deselected. They cannot be all highlighted. So once you have those regions deselected, now we can go ahead and view closer and closer we can zoom in on the specific area. The second way is actually highlighting one region. That is here, the third region. Bar 17 is the start of the third region. And we can zoom in this way. Maybe we want to zoom in on bar 25, which is the end of the third region and the beginning of the fourth region, or somewhere in the middle, like bar five here. And notice, we will not be zooming in on bar five because the third region is still selected. So we have to select the first region and then we will be zooming in and everything is good. So that's one way to go around that. When these are all selected, you can't choose willy nilly because it simply won't zoom in. You'll need to be very specific uh, like clicking on region four or deselecting all regions. And there you go. Snag two has to do with the catch playhead button in your editor. So let's go ahead and hit E, shortcut E for editor. And we are in our drummer track. Let's go ahead and highlight our MIDI track. And I'll go ahead and get that nice and neat for you. Let's just go ahead and go all the way to bar one. Now here inside this piano roll, we have our catch playhead button. Now this needs to remain highlighted if you don't want to manually scroll as your project is playing along. So we do have this highlighted and you can see it's called the catch playhead. So I'm going to go ahead and play and we'll see how the playhead catches and returns to the left of the window. It's 
So you can see that this bar, or this window rather, is not exceeding a bar and a half. But right, right around here, it will catch and go to the left of the piano roll, which is quite nice. If I deselect it, I have no way of seeing it in this editor window. I have to use my mouse and, you know, that's, that's fine, I guess, but it's kind of a nuisance because, you know, I want to I be able to see it in real time. So if I highlight it again or select it again, it will catch the playhead and go back. Yeah, so around, around right at that last four, you can see that it suddenly reset itself a little so I could see it ahead of time. So that is snag two, where this is deselected. And you know you don't want to use your mouse and, and, and just scroll all the way over here. You want to make sure that this is highlighted in your editor window. Snag three has to do with the link button in your editor. So I'll go ahead and hit E. And let's just go ahead and zoom in on all 32 bars there. This is our link button here. You can see it. It kind of looks like that hyperlink icon. This really depends on what you prefer. I prefer this on. It really helps me navigate the area or section of my workspace, or really my editor space. It, it does depend. So if I select only one region here, You'll notice that only bars one through nine is seen in the editor. Now, if I hold down shift and do the fourth bar, now you can see, well, these two are highlighted. And so I, I see that much information in the editor window. And of course, if all are highlighted, all information is in the editor window. Now, if I deselect this, I won't see that same feature. I'll highlight it, but now only this region is highlighted. You know, you can see that it's a, the designated region in that the, this is a lighter shade of green, whereas the others are, you know, the normal MIDI default color, region two, region four, region three. But for me, I just don't really have a way of seeing this very well. Rather, I prefer the link region, and so I can concentrate just on that region I need when I have this selected. So it really does depend on what you prefer. If you prefer this as I do, then you'll want this on. Uh, it's a hassle just to have it more like this and, and all that. So yeah, keep it on just for consistency's sake. and. That's your fixing snag three. All right, snag four has to do with your MIDI out button. And that is this green button here, right next to your blue catch play head button. There's really no good reason for this to be off. This should be on all the time. If this is off, if this is deselected, you will not be able to hear any MIDI out. What does that mean? Well, if I want to work dynamically in this editor window and, you know, select all of this, I hear no sound. If I move this up or down, I'm not getting any feedback. I don't even know what instrument I'm in unless I know the specific track. If this is on, I will be able to hear this MIDI. I know the instrument, I know the color of it, the nature of it. I can hear it go up. I can hear it go down. I can move just one block. And I find that feedback to be very important when I'm composing. Maybe not so much editing, but it's just very, very helpful. If you can't hear MIDI output, it's because this button here 
has been deselected in your editor window in your piano roll. So the quick fix is, of course, to select it. All right, the final snag is the record enable button. This should be highlighted. If this is not highlighted, you will not be able to hear your recording in real time. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and duplicate this track. And we'll go ahead and mute this track. So right now, this record enable button is on, of course, and you should be able to hear it. Deselect it. I will press the keys again, and there's nothing. Now, let's go ahead and record it. I will hit the shortcut R for recording. So you can see that MIDI data is going on. There is something written down for our editor. So it has been recorded, we just didn't hear anything. And one thing to note is playback is not affected. With this deselected, we'll still hear it as playback. We just don't hear it while we're recording. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. Might be a little off there. So we heard playback, and, and the reason why you didn't hear that first chord, I suspect, is I didn't get that quantized just right. You can see that uh, it didn't quite make that beat. Now you should be able to hear it. There. So yeah, playback, that's, that's not affected. You can hear that just fine. Now let's go ahead and try that again with the record button selected. I suspect that I did not get that quantized. No, I didn't see how it's uh, uh, going a little past that boundary there. Let's go ahead and quantize that to the nearest, oops, uh, I was gonna say near 16th note, but that didn't do this very well. Just move that back. <laughs> and there we go again. All right, so if you are recording, especially your MIDI data and your MIDI instruments, you're just gonna want this on the whole time. And it usually is on by default, but if you can't hear your instruments, just kind of like as it was with uh, the, the MIDI out, just make sure that those two buttons are selected. The MIDI out, of course, without it. Oh, I can't hear it with it. Yay. And then also, whoops, <laughs> don't deselect it. And then also the record enable button. Just keep that on. It's quite nice. And there we go. Those are the five snags to overcome for efficient workflow. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's beneficial to you in your Logic Pro working process. Thanks always for watching and listening. Until I see you next, keep producing the art you love, and I'll catch you later. Thanks again.